Item Number SCP-224 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures Item SCP-224 is to be stored in a soundproof enclosure with acoustic destructive interference nodes. Nodes must be replaced on a weekly basis by remote means due to the erratic nature of SCP-224's effect. Non-Class D personnel are not to enter the enclosure. Additionally, SCP-224's enclosure must be kept free from moisture to avoid rapid oxidation. In the event that the clock begins to chime, all personnel must evacuate the area, and the location should be secured following Procedure Z-877. Description SCP-224 is a wooden grandfather clock, accented with black lacquer and gold leaf. Markings, remotely observed, date its origin to the late 19th century. Although an internal examination of its components has been performed, the density and construction of its gears make its method of function impossible to interpret. The hands of the clock do not move with any known consistency, though the tendency seems to be generally clockwise. Additionally, chimes occur at non-regular intervals ranging from approximately one minute to several months. To further complicate matters, the numbers on the clock also have a tendency to move and shift, though they generally retain ascending order. Each chime has an anomalous acoustic signature that causes a drastic localized temporal acceleration. People and objects in range of the sound begin to age. The amount of time is not consistent with the chimes, ranging from essentially inconsequential amounts to several years, though the amount aged during any single event is consistent for all objects within the field of effect. SCP-224 was originally found in the teak shop and purchased by Mr. as a gift for his wife. When brought home and wound, the anomalous properties were noticed, though not acted upon, as both apparently considered the object broken. Their bodies were discovered in their collapsed house two days later, significantly aged. Foundation personnel monitoring took interest, and SCP-224 was subsequently recovered. Agents were unfortunately lost following exposure during transportation. Any instances of SCP-224 retaining any numeric pattern for an extended period should be reported to Dr. Locke. Failure to do so will result in suspension and possible demotion. Addendum SCP-224 Cataloged Incidents Due to repeated errors on the part of the maintenance crews working on containment for SCP-224, Dr. Simmons insisted that the following report be spread among the on-site work crews to fully stress the importance of SCP-224's containment. After its circulation, it was added to the primary case file for historical purposes. Today, I had the pleasure of informing Agent that he is to be given retirement pay and is free to leave active duty as of this evening. It was not initially approved by Director until I explained the circumstances. Agent who is the father of Alice and the husband of Marilee, was walking past the SCP-224 containment facility on Friday, March 17, 1980. He was reporting to his supervisor's office to deliver the final report on SCP, which he was instrumental in helping acquire. Because SCP-224's effect is so unpredictable, he had no way of knowing that the object had activated until the acoustic dampening equipment failed, leading to the collapse of the wall. At this time, Agent was exposed to seven iterations of SCP-224's effect. The first one saw him age into his mid-30s. Those of you who have seen the video are aware that this wasn't a drastic change. However, by the second exposure, he was now well into his 40s. There was significant graying of hair. By the third iteration, he was balding, and we estimate his age reached into the early 60s. By the fourth, his skin had noticeably wrinkled, with liver spots appearing in several places. By the sixth iteration, Agent collapsed due to a broken hip, fracturing several ribs and his left arm. It was at this time that he lost control of his bowels and bladder. When the seventh iteration ended, containment had to be manually re-established. At this time, Agent is estimated to be over a hundred years old. As a note, Agent volunteered for termination and examination of SCP-224's effects should the retirement pay he was now technically entitled to be rewarded to his family. I heartily thank Director and Agent for giving us this opportunity to study SCP-224's effect. I hope you'll remember in the future that, while some SCPs kill immediately, others do not. Others leave lingering effects that have ramifications for the people 
and the families of the people who are subjected to them. Dr. Rasmussen was down the hall from Agent He is now a 35-year-old man in an elderly body. Assistant researcher Jessup, who was pregnant when she was exposed in the same incident, died when her child was forced through her abdomen. Her son is a 40-year-old man with the mind of an infant. Dr. Quinn's undiagnosed case of bladder cancer consumed his entire abdomen in a matter of moments. Please keep these incidents in mind before failing to replace the perfectly fine acoustic nodes in the containment enclosure. Dr. J. Simmons, Head of Containment, SCP-224.